Good morning, I'm Selvan Waldron. I'm Director of Student Services from the Carlos Cesario Sonia Gutierrez campus. It is our pleasure to welcome all of our guests here, students, guests, staff, to Teaching Central America Week, a discussion panel. Today we will uh, hear from several guests about art, culture, history, and all that makes Central America a amazing and wonderful region of the world. Many times we see stories, we see news about Central America, and it's usually a sort of one narrative, a narrative about people leaving the region to come to the United States, a narrative about poverty, a narrative about the war. Today you will hear another narrative about the richness and the culture and the wealth of seven beautiful countries. The countries of Latin America include Belize, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, and Panama. Welcome to Teaching Central America Week. I'm joined by Fidel, who's our librarian, and Fidel will give some quick words about the Living Library series. Fidel? Yes, uh, thank you, Salvan. Welcome, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to see you all. And as uh, Salvan mentioned, this is one of the activities that we uh, jointly do with student services. And in the library as well, we have a tradition of uh, presenting people, hearing from uh, real uh, people and presenting their stories that what we name as uh, living libraries. So it's just a combination of, you know, this too that makes this, you know, presentation work. And again, thank you and uh, enjoy the presentations today. Thank you, Fidel. So let us jump in. Before we hear from our two amazing uh, guests, uh, Frida and Grego, and also from our, our amazing student, Teresita, let's watch a video together. And you'll see a lot of art displayed today. This art is from Maria Esquivel. She's a Costa Rican photojournalist, and one of her photos is there right next to the agenda. So let's watch a very short video together. It's called 500 Years Life in Resistance. <laughs> Guatemala avance, tiene que haber justicia por las vidas que fueron tomadas y la tierra que fue robada. A usted lo acusan de la comisión del delito de genocidio. En Guatemala no hubo genocidio. En ningún régimen en Guatemala no hubo genocidio. No voy a descansar hasta verlos en la cárcel. No es fácil ver a un asesino a los ojos. Y decirle, tú mataste a mi familia. No ha habido ninguna prueba que evidencie mi participación. Ordenando su ingreso directamente a prisión. Que las juntas directivas al frente. pueblos indígenas van a defender lo que les queda de territorios con la propia vida. El pueblo va a tomar el poder de Guatemala.
So with that, I'll introduce now uh, Carla Ramos. Carla is our case manager who will introduce our two guests. Carla. Um, good morning, all. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, this is a very exciting uh, week and very exciting activity. Um, as Delbon said before, we often hear in the news only negative things about Central American region. And today we are very lucky to have two um, uh, guests from El Salvador uh, to talk about the other face of, of El Salvador, the face of um, successful people, the face of um, the culture and the enrichment arts that we have as a country. So with that, um, we're gonna have Frida Larios. Frida Larios is a typographic artist from El Salvador. That's a mix of um, indigenous ancestry art. Um, we are very lucky to have uh, a mural at the Sonia Gutierrez campus that she with other uh, students and staff members created when, when we, um, reopen the building, uh, I invite you to go to the, um, uh, oh my God, I forgot the name of the room. It's been so long, we've been out of the, uh, of the building. <laughs> uh, yeah, next to the cafeteria, to the bistro, I'm sorry. Uh, so you can um, enjoy that mural. Um, she holds a, a Bachelor of Arts from, uh, from University College Falmouth in Cornwall, England, a Master of Art in Communication Design from Central St. Martin's College of Art and Design, University of the Arts, London, England, while in London, the former Central American Beach Volleyball gold medalist. So not only uh, an artist and, and, and painter, but also a athlete. Um, so, Thank you, Frida, for being with us. And just so you know, Frida is joining us from El Salvador. So um, very nice and warm down there, right, Frida? Um, so we also have Grego Pineda. Can you go to the next? Okay. So Grego Pineda, it's a Salvadorian American and former ambassador from El Salvador to Peru. He is a master in Hispanic American literature lawyer in Noro Republic. Um, he immigrated to the United States when he began his uh, literary life, and he has published um, several books that, uh, that we will show um, later in his uh, presentation. Um, Grego also uh, received a, um, a, 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 a Price, I think, uh, from the president of Peru, uh, that is called uh, La Gran Cruz, uh, for his extraordinary work at as an as an ambassador in Peru. So thank you both for joining us, and um, we're going to hear from Frida. Yes, we'll hear from Frida first, and Frida, you want to share your screen, right? <clears throat> uh, yes, I'm going to start by uh, sharing um, something, a, a recent mural we um, worked on with um, uh, someone and people know uh, Carlos Rosario and maybe beyond also he's a Ghanaian artist, uh, Musa Suala. So, we worked on a, a mural uh, for, upon working on the mural at Carlos Rosario School with uh, fellow um, students at Carlos Rosario, including um, Maria Vanessa, Carla, and others who collaborated because it was a col collective process. Uh, we uh, recently worked on um, 
and homage um, and altar and uh, the mural artwork uh, at uh, Panam uh, International Supermarket on 14th Street on Georgia Avenue. And this is the uh, Vanessa Guillen, slain Vanessa Guillen. Uh, she was murdered at Fort Hood in Texas. And uh, we activated a space in Washington to, to, to pay respects for her and her family who are uh, mourning at this time. And so I wanted to share that um, with everyone uh, so that you can visit whenever you like and, and just talk about uh, a recent process in which um, uh, we worked on with uh, teacher uh, and master Musa Swala, like I call him because he's a master muralist and um, and myself and Itai Rogers Fett, who is a former uh, University of the District of Columbia UDC where I teach a uh, student. And the three of us uh, worked in this, um, in this um, process in which, um, uh, for example, Itai worked on the background. I worked on the, de the, the design and the layout and the concept. And uh, Musa worked on the portrait, on the beautiful portrait of her uh, as a military member, very young military member recruited uh, in her high school. And um, uh, he, he worked on this beautiful portrait and the hands that represent the love icon. And inside we can find some um, Mayan hieroglyphics that I mean cal, uh, cal, sorry, with a glottal stop that means uh, raise up or lift up and um, uh, black and indigenous lives uh, that matter. So um, after working at Carlos Rosario and the mural there, which I am uh, going to show, uh, you're not, you're not at right now at, where are you? You're not at Carlos Rosario, right? Uh, uh, my compañeros at Carlos Rosario, you're at your own oh, home. We are all learning but that from is, our homes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, me too. I mean, my father's home in El, in El Salvador, and um, um, he recently passed. So it's a, it's a you know very sad time also for my, for myself, and um, I cannot even imagine what Vanessa's family went through, um, you know, by having a, a member of their family, you know, being murdered in the same institution where where she was supposed to protect, uh, you know, the U.S. Uh, so um, I am actually trying to, the presentation is, uh, my uh, virtual presentation is um, very slow right now because I have a, a slow connection. So I'm, I'm going to continue talking about the this process and the, the, the meanings behind these uh, symbols and uh, the work that I've been doing um, since I was in England and I started doing a master's thesis there uh, uh, at, at this uh, University of the Arts London where I had arrived uh, through a um, national scholarship here I was awarded. Uh, it's um, Fantel uh, uh, Sister uh, Scholarship of Fulbright that I earned to, to do those studies. And uh, I uh, started, you know, looking inside for what was rep representative of, um, you know, my own culture uh, rather than looking outside for what contemporary design and art was obviously fully available in England and especially in London, which is a hub of um, contemporary arts and innovation in every aspect and sense. So being in, in England provided for that self-reflection and inspiration and looking into uh, uh, you know, my own roots and so during that time, it was two years, I would develop a thesis that uh, researched the 
hieroglyphics that belong to part the northern part of Central America, but indigenous language, of course, was uh, also present in, in pre-colonial times, uh, you know, since the beginning of times and before the beginning of times, according to to the colonial doctrines that we've all been re receiving, you know, in uh, in the Western um, Western type of education. So after graduating from this master's uh, thesis, uh, or sorry, master's degree in communication design, I continued to, to uh, research and, and produce creative work um, respecting the meanings of, uh, uh, you know, our ancestors, my ancestors, but at the same time interpreting them into a, a contemporary use in a contemporary language. And I, I went to live in, uh, in Honduras, in Copan, and uh, Copan, Ruinas, Copan Ruins is called, with the Maya community where I met my, my husband, who is half from Honduran, half, half from uh, Kentucky, <laughs> Kentuckian, like I call him. Uh, and so we we lived there in the in the site in the mountain, and uh, this is where I wrote. Um, and Honduras is very close to El Salvador, as Selvan already showed in the in in the map. And uh, we share um, we share a people, uh, the Maya Charti people, who were in uh, the northern part of our country and also reaching through Guatemala, there's a corridor and then going all the way to, to the ruins. So before we had uh, geopolitical boundaries, we were, you know, united as a people and also the uh, Maya script was part of our basic code of written communication and this is what um, made me very close to to this uh, script or hieroglyphics because we we were sharing a same a uh, written code and uh, with different dialects and languages that are present and live today in our Maya peoples uh, yet that code that was present between 300 after Christ and 900 after Christ during the classic period was a single one, you know, throughout different jungles and states. And this is very peculiar uh, to find and to know uh, that is our heritage and um, that, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it really just didn't, wasn't in use after the classic period. And the, and the colonization or invasion also remove and try and burn all those books and codes, uh, yet it persisted in the oral narratives, right? But those written codes uh, supposedly, you know, they, they, uh, they didn't surpass time and space like the, the oral traditions. And so my idea is that we can we can bring them back into our contemporary use by, for example, um, I, the you know writing books and uh, facilitating workshops like I do in Washington D.C. And one of those workshops, I you know, we facilitated like Carlos Rosario, and this is how we started that mural by trying to look into our own blood memory and then creating together the integration of different cultures, including from, you know, Musa's culture from Accra, Ghana, and, uh, you know, his own na native uh, iconographic language, or Vanessa, uh, for example, Maria Vanessa's, and uh, Jung from Korea, and also Eliezer Orellana, whom you, you might know, uh, uh, a former student of Carlos Rosario from Honduras. And I wanted to just uh, share as, uh, um, and read some of the book that, part of the book that I wrote uh, and illustrated is called The Community Buried by an Erupting Volcano. And I was going to show you, um, also share another uh, photo of where we were living in, 
in Honduras uh, uh, while at my time there that I was telling you about. With Tyler, my husband, we now live obviously in Washington, D.C. Before I tell you the story so that you have an idea of the of, of the space where we were creating, uh, you know, uh, this book. And this is uh, with the community there. This is um, uh, in Copan, Honduras. The Maya site is right across uh, and crossing the, the Copan River. Uh, across, you know, the mountain, you find the, the archaeological site and the Maya community we were living with uh, above um, that mountain. And um, Honduras, uh, I was living in El Salvador and Honduras at that time uh, during the, the coup d'etat that happened in 2009 and then we migrated to California and then to Washington. So a lot of migration and diasporic um, experiences. The community buried by the erupting volcano is called and is based on the, it's not a, a Copan archaeological site in Honduras, but in El Salvador's only uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site. This is the foreword by the principal researcher of the site, Dr. Payson Sheets. And this is how you read the book. So on one side you find the uh, uh, Spanish or Castellano and then in the middle you find the visual symbols interpreted based on and respectfully based on the uh, traditional one from the classic period here in English. Uh, I don't know how am I doing with time and uh, if I can read the first two pages or let me know uh, if have you have any questions yes. so far. You have time okay. for that, yeah. And this, okay, I'll take, you know, around five more minutes. Uh, this is uh, the new glossary. This is the third edition. I hope everyone can see well. <laughs> uh, my presentation uh, is not that big, but 60 megabytes is really, <laughs> is really making my connection uh, work. <laughs> so um, this is the glossary and it is um, translated to, uh, for example, here we find the moon, and it, this is the first translation or transliteration is in uh, Maya uh, Pipil, uh, Tayua, or, or Night, or Metsi is moon, and then we find the, the transliteration in Maya Chorti, which is Akbar, Akbar, and then we find the transliteration in Spanish, noche, and in English, night. And these here are the stars and then the moon, and together uh, they conform the, no the poetic notion of artists, ancestral artists, and contemporary artists. Uh, of the night. And so then you apply this lang this vocabulary to the narrative or the, the story for children, youth, and, you know, uh, abuelos, also elderly, with, uh, you know, we've uh, done workshops with um, a lot of members of the uh, DC a, a diasporic community. And so I'll start. Um, many, many years ago, there was a child called the Green Child. His friends called him Green Child because he loved helping his mother sew maize. The Green child lived with his family in a Mayan community. Every night before going to sleep, we already learned the night, <laughs> before going to sleep, the green child walked a path to a royal temple called San Andres to watch the fire ceremony there the spiritual guide burned copal incense 
to send messages to his grandfather who was now with Father Sky. And now in, in Spanish, hace muchos, muchos años había un niño a quien le decían Niño Verde. Sus amigos le decían Niño Verde porque le encantaba ayudar a su madre a sembrar maíz. Él, Niño Verde, vivía con su familia en una comunidad maya. Cada noche antes de irse a dormir, él, Niño Verde, caminaba por... Ajá, uh -huh, you paying attention? <laughs> El, eh, un eh, camino o un eh, sendero hacia un templo re, real llamado San Andrés a ver la ceremonia del fuego. Ahí el guía espiritual quemaba incienso de copal y enviaba mensajes a su abuelo, quien ya estaba con el Padre Cielo. So that's, uh, the book continues and it explains about the erupting volcano. There was an eruption and the family was at home at night eating tamales and beans. And uh, it, it happened in, in reality, that eruption, 600 after Christ. And it finishes um, it saying that the green child saved them, saved his family, so no one died. And here you have a cut and paste activity and um, all the, the partners and collaborators, including the Iniciativa Portadores del Nahuatl, uh, of which I am a member of my community here in El Salvador, in Nahuatl Pipil, and then Nuevo Día, Maya Chorti, um, uh, Association of Nations in Guatemala, and Chinam Chorti, also part of this uh, um, Chorti Nation, a collective of communities, and, uh, and you know, it's part of the it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site in Diana, who is who are the sponsors of of the publication. Uh, and so, this is the little book, and this is another book. Um, and uh, sorry, just to point you out, this book is available at Teaching for Change, and uh, in Washington, the organization or creator of, of teaching for Central America or teaching about Central America, a collection of books. I don't know if there's messages in the chat that I should look at. Ah, yeah. Okay. Ah, yeah. Teresita Retana is asking where can I buy the book? And uh, yeah, you can buy it um, at uh, teachingforchange.org and you and just look for teaching central america and you'll find a link or um at the don barton oaks museum also in washington dc and um let me think of other there's other places but there's also online it's easy i have an online shop too where you can buy it and it is in the uh, you know part, part of the proceeds go to the communities, the two communities mentioned at the end of the book. And this is Animales Interiores. And this is the cacao tree. It's a scroll book, booklet, that has fables uh, about nine animals of the underworld. Uh, the fables are written by Vanessa Nunez, a Salvadoran a writer, and the graphics and conception uh, an illustration of the, of the book by myself. And this is the immortal cacao tree. The cacao tree is a, one of the main elements of our Carlos Rosario a mural. And so now lastly, I will share a, a part of the of the mural that we've been talking about and we haven't yet seen uh, at Carlos Rosario. And this is a new share screen. This is the, the tree codex is called uh, Mural Making as a Cultural Collective is the name of this other book um, that was published by Thick Press.
Press, a independent publisher in Washington, a, a intersecting between healing and art and design and writing and um, a social work. And so this is the line work, it's just a black and white version of the mural. And here you have, you know, the credits, uh, uh, they're all credited to Carlos Rosario. Uh, this book is all credited to Carlos Rosario, who was commissioner and um, <laughs> instigator of this uh, collective creation. And this is part of the process that we went through with, um, with the book sorry, not with the book, with the mural, some drafts that you can see, some poems that we wrote together with uh, the students and with Musa. Uh, uh, so here are some quotes. It's also a poetic book uh, in which uh, the, the transcript of the book is just, uh, uh, is transferred to the book and then printed immediately. So there's not much addition in the book and it's part of the, this creative process. And these are some of the sketches, some of the, the contents, some of the ideas that we use to come up with the final, uh, with the final, um, you know, piece that you see on the wall, right? And, and it's per, a permanent uh, mural piece. Uh, so, for example, Eliezer said, we live life together. Sankofa means return to our roots in um, Musa's uh, native language from Ghana. Uh, together we can fly over our dreams. So those are only, you know, words and images that came to us after going uh, creating our, our these workshops and then finally uh, just creating the final piece of the mural. And so, uh, yeah, that is, I think, it uh, all for now from me. In case there are any questions, uh, please let me know. This, uh, sorry, if you want to know the, I'll share where the, you can buy the book. Uh, it's at Thick Press. Uh, this the website Thick Press right here. Thickpress.com is where you can buy the book, and it's only what you pay for the book is only for the printing. There's no profit, and um, uh, of course Carlos Rosario received some of the books. So yes, Thick Press is where you can get it. Thank you very much, and I hope uh, uh, you know you have any questions or it was useful for the for the panel. And I'm gonna have to, uh, to go right now because uh, I have another, I have to, I'm gonna teach another class at, at Yale University that invited me and I'm gonna move on to that panel right now. So I apologize that I cannot stay to listen to Mr. Uh, Gregor Pineda and our other uh, wonderful panelists that we have today. Uh, and our uh, my fellow artists, uh, Central American artists, uh, thank you also for the work that you're doing and uh, the resistance through our artworks. Thank you so much, Frida. We will keep resisting. I wanted to quickly in introduce, we have a few um, houses of staff who are here, but very importantly, Tata Villanueva is here, who's our art integration manager. And I wanted to just share a few yeah. words about how we're in integrating art and art resistance into our work at Conscious Ariel. Tara, are you there? I am here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. So I'm just going to be as fast as I can. <laughs> um, I just to say, Tara has the, the mural at her back. Hi, yeah, Tara. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I have it behind me. <laughs> okay, bye. Sorry. <laughs> bye, Frida. Um, bye. I think we were truly blessed to have someone like Frida be introduced to our school, um, especially because we were introduced to her from another Central American um, focused organization, Casa de la Cultura El Salvador. And Jeanette Noltenius is the, the founder of that organization. So she introduced me to Frida. And um, Frida just showed you the hashtag tree codex that they worked on. I have it behind me in color, just a portion behind me in color. I thought it was fitting to put. 
Um, Frida, I will say, um, was the center of this during our school's first student-centered mural creation. So kind of as Paolo Freire once talks about this, we're all co-creators in the classroom and Frida really centralized that and uplifted that with the students, which I thought was fantastic. So for me, arts integration is the core of my work at this school. And over the years, I've stumbled upon literally exquisite talent in the student body. We, when we originally did the call out for the mural, um, and this was Maria Vanessa was a huge part of this recruitment. Um, we recruited a lot of students and we didn't really know what was going to happen, right? And that, I guess that's the beauty of arts integration and, and co-creating something all together, like a collective, right? We had, as um, Frida mentioned, Eliezer Orellana, he's a Honduran student. He really learned the art of artistry. He didn't really know much of artistry prior to that. And he also, in, in uplifting his own Honduran um, heritage, he also uplifted his own LGBTQ plus stories as well. And that was incorporated. So that's also even just more marginalized communities that are also being empowered within this mural that I thought was super important. Musa Swala was already a muralist, but we didn't know that, right? So the fact that we put a call out was incredible because then it gave him a place and a platform to actually have him shine. And now he's one of our artists in residence at the school. And he's returning at the end of this month to be an artist in residence for us again. So I thank Frida's amazingness to actually cultivate and foster that relationship for us because it's been absolutely empowering for Musa and now they're on together making murals around the city and like that one she showed of Vanessa literally is down the street from me and I see it every day so I just love like what's happening here you know the the collaboration I also wanted to talk quickly about why arts integration is so important so it really connects folks to their identities right um it elevates stories it empowers people's cultures we live in a Eurocentric society where we are all indoctrinated, all of us are indoctrinated into believing that whiteness is the center. But our job in this new generation is to decenter whiteness. And we're supposed to empower black indigenous people of color stories. I'm so proud to be this sort of advocate within our communities. And the ways for students to advocate for visual arts in our classroom is, through their ESL classes, you can ask your teacher. Through heritage celebrations, um, you can tell people to contact me if you if you don't know me. So I'm here all the time. You can visit museums. You can visit theaters. There's so many different ways to do it. I, I can't go into all those details right now because I have a little bit of time left. Um, but contacting me is like a first step to doing this, and also constantly telling your teachers that this is something that you want to do. So I want to thank Selvin for giving me this moment. I'm really happy to be a part of this talk today. Um, Frida has really touched a lot of our lives in, in the school, all staff, um, students, faculty. And, um, and this has been over a, just a year and a half time, maybe a little bit longer. And all of this about this art is really about bringing communities together. And what I, I see um, is very apparent now with Frida, especially with Frida and Musa, um, is bringing black and brown communities together because that's where the real strength comes in. So, bye. <laughs> I'm done talking. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tarano. That was amazing. We appreciate that. So with that, we will jump forward to our very, very special and honored guest, our second honored guest in Grego Pineda. Grego, the floor is yours. Buenos días y muchas gracias por invitarme a estar con ustedes. Especialmente agradezco. Eh, hay, ¿Hay interpretación simultánea? Sí, Grego, eh, ¿cómo quiere que lo hagamos? Eh, como guste, yo uh, hablo y ustedes van traduciendo. Como, conforme, como, como usted quiera, eh, con mucho gusto, si usted se detiene. Es cuando yo entro a hablar y, y solo le pido que, que cuando guste entre usted y okay. nada más me haga una señal o algo 
yo lo voy a estar, yo lo voy a estar viendo. Entonces, si me permite, voy a, voy a hablar, uh, voy a decir el, um, la bienvenida. Um, good morning and thank you for having me here today. I would especially like to thank and congratulate the Carlos Rosario International Public Charter School for their very relevant work towards the development and personal and professional growth of its students. Sí, uh, la República de El Salvador es un país centroamericano y de todos ellos es el más pequeño en el territorio. The Republic of El Salvador is a Central American country, the smallest among them in terms of territorial extension. La historia de El Salvador es muy compleja y cuesta entenderla. Somos the history siete of, I'm sorry, perdón, perdón. So, somos siete millones de habitantes, pero todos viven en apenas 21 mil kilómetros cuadrados. The history of El Salvador is very complex and difficult to understand. We are 7 million inhabitants, all living in barely 21,000 square kilometers, which is the equivalent uh, to about 8,100 square miles. Sí, sí. Por más de 100 años, hubo abusos contra el pueblo hasta que en 1981 estalló una guerra civil porque el pueblo hizo la revolución y exigió un gobierno que sirviera a todos y no solo a una minoría. During over 100 years, the people was abused until in 1981, a civil war broke because the people built the revolution and demanded a government to serve all and not only a minority. Esta guerra duró entre 1981 y 1992. Más de dos millones de salvadoreños huyeron del país para salvar sus vidas y ahora viven en Australia, Canadá y Estados Unidos principalmente. This war lasted from 1981 to 1992. Over 2 million Salvadorans fled the country to save their lives and are currently living mainly in Australia, Canada and the US. Eh, desde aquella época hasta ahora, mucho ha cambiado El Salvador. Y hoy hay más democracia y menos injusticias. Since those times and until the present, El Salvador has been through deep change and is more democratic and less unfair today. Pero todavía se sufren las consecuencias de la guerra porque muchos niños quedaron huérfanos en esa guerra y muchos más terminaron de crecer con sus ancianos abuelos mientras sus padres migraron y desde otros países ayudaron económicamente a hijos y padres. Nevertheless, the consequences of the war are still being experienced because many children were orphaned during that war and many other were raised by their old grandparents while their parents migrated and from other countries gave financial assistance both to their children and parents. Ahora, tenemos una sociedad que busca sanar las heridas de la guerra y tratamos de vivir en paz. Currently, our society is looking to heal the wounds of war and tries to live peacefully. Hay muchos miles de salvadoreños y salvadoreñas viviendo en Los Ángeles, en los Estados Unidos de América. Somos gente honesta que buscamos una oportunidad de trabajo y de estudio para crecer como personas. Many thousands of Salvadorans live in the United States of America. We are honest people looking for work and study opportunities to grow as human beings. Buscamos paz, trabajo y justicia. En general, el salvadoreño es pacífico porque ha sufrido la violencia en su país. We strive for peace, work and justice. In general, the Salvadoran citizen is peaceful and has suffered from the violence in their country. También quiero hablar de mi vida en Washington, D.C. I also want to talk about my life in Washington, D.C. Vine en el año 2001 junto a mi familia. Trabajé en diferentes actividades para vivir. I came here in 2001 with my family and I work in different activities to make a living. Pero siempre continué estudiando y escribiendo y por eso logré publicar dos libros de literatura. 
but I always kept studying and writing and was able to publish two literature books. Y he trabajado por promover la cultura salvadoreña dentro de la comunidad y los Estados Unidos de América. And I have worked to promote the Salvadoran uh, culture within the community and in the United States of America. Soy abogado del de Salvador, pero no puedo ejercer mi profesión en los Estados Unidos. I am an attorney in El Salvador, but I cannot practice my profession in the U.S. Hace seis años, el gobierno del de Salvador me nombró embajador en el Perú y estuve allá hasta el año pasado. Six years ago, the Salvadoran government appointed me as ambassador to Peru and was there until last year. Durante el tiempo que trabajé en Perú, aproveché para ir a la universidad y estudié por cuatro años ganando un diploma de magíster en literatura latinoamericana. During my time in Peru, I was able to attend university and studied for four years, obtaining my master diploma in Latin American literature. Les comparto que estoy muy feliz de haber estudiado literatura. Comencé a estudiar la maestría a los 51 años de edad y la terminé cuando tenía 55. I want to share with you that I'm very happy to have studied literature. I began the master's degree when I was 51 years old and finished when I was 55. Hoy, a los 56, estoy buscando diferentes maneras de iniciar estudios de doctorado en literatura. Today, at 56, I'm looking for different ways to begin a doctorate in literature. Es muy difícil, pero estoy intentándolo. <laughs> it is very difficult, but I am trying. Las oportunidades de vida hay que generarlas sin importar la edad. Hay que hacer la vida y no esperar que la vida nos haga. Muchas gracias. We must generate the opportunities life brings regardless of age. We must make our life, not wait for life to build us. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, also, I am ready to answer any question. Uh, if you understand my English, I will be happy with uh, to answer in, in, in English. This is back to back on. I have a question. Yes, please ask any question. Yes? Uh, can I talk? I'm sorry. Yes, please ask the question. Yes, um, good morning. I'm sorry, I, I, my name is Patricia. I'm from El Salvador and I'm in a level of English in Carlos Rosario. And I have, uh, I feel glad that uh, to stay with, with that, this group, um, welcome. And also I have to ask the question about the the Mr. Uh, could you repeat the, uh, repeat the name, please? I'm sorry. Um, Great, Great. But I have a question. So the question is, how, how do you feel if you don't uh, if you don't uh, work about your career? Because I had that same situation when I come in at this country. I'm I'm still studying English. I'm, I've been working. I have I had a different works, but I left my career, you know, and then I I am still struggling to come back at the hospital when I used to work, you know, the medical career. But how do you feel if you don't uh, work about your, your career? Do you feel something or, or now you feel good when you, you are working in the, the art, the literature career? Well, when I come in this country, of course, my first, my first uh, challenge was to learn English. Uh, because I didn't know any word in English. So I started to learn as a child, A, B, C, whatever. It was so, so uh, excited to learn a new language. But uh, also I have a strong pressure, economical pressure to have a, li a life in USA. And then so for that reason, I let my profession at the, at the, at the side because I needed to create money. So I started to work uh, in a different store, and uh, after I uh, started to work in construction industry, but I, the good luck is uh, the big construction company, they knew that I was a lawyer, so I have a professional background. So they support to me to study the new profession as a safety 
uh, construction. So I got a financial support from them. So I start to develop my new career as a safety manager in construction. So in that way, I was working um, a 11 years in uh, construction industry, nothing to see with lawyer. So in one way, I couldn't practice my, my profession. But another, I had the opportunity to start a new life in USA. So uh, I wasn't uh, sad. I wasn't, I was happy to see the new opportunity. So I developed my new career as a, um, as a safety construction. But beyond than that, my, um, my feeling and my uh, strong motivation was to be a writer, author, author, writer. So obviously I needed to write in Spanish because in English, you know, uh, I, I speak English just because I need it because I need it. So uh, uh, always I say I speak English with my mind, but I speak Spanish, I, I use my, my soul, my heart. So when I start to, to write as a, as a writer, uh, I start to develop my career as a writer. So um, now, uh, more than uh, 11 years after, uh, I am no, sad with my profession my profession because i am so happy to be a writer even i i i work with a different in different issues in different uh, industry just is to to make money to life but my real life is to write i um, promote the culture but um even i i am not practicing my profession as a lawyer even though I continue to be lawyer. You know, it's like you are a profession. If you don't work as as a in your profession anyway, you continue being as a profession. It's like like to have the so proud by itself, right? I don't know. Is 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 uh, you follow my explanation? Yes. Yes, I I think with many many people who come in from different countries try to have a dream to do something but come back to do uh, their careers or something but we have to stop and do other things meanwhile we we get another dreams you know we have to put a, a stand by some dreams meanwhile we we have to care the family support the families and 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 finally i think you or we can get something that when we had enough time for us you know i think yeah, my, my recommendation is to have, have an open mind and to see all opportunity because that is true. I couldn't practice my, my career as a lawyer, but uh, 16 years after when I got invitation for my government to be a ambassador in Peru, I, I was so proud with the offer. I said I went to Peru. Uh, during five years, of course, I worked as a, as a lawyer because to be ambassador, I needed to know uh, Salvadorian law. So I practiced my, my knowledge as a lawyer. And then in uh, five years, again, I could be a lawyer again. Uh, but now I come back, I can't practice my profession. So I continue looking the other way to be person, and professional and to make money in this country. Thank you. Thank you so much. You. Any any other questions? We're gonna actually go into a discussion panel now where Gregor will be a part of the discussion panel as well. Thank you so much, Gregor, and we'll be hearing from you more during the presentation. So now I'll introduce Vanessa Magana, who will be the moderator for our discussion panel. Vanessa? Hi, good morning, everyone. Again, my name is Vanessa Magana. I, uh, I am the program assistant of student services. And I used to work closely with Ana Villanueva. <laughs> I'm not from El Salvador. I am from Mexico. But I have been attached to El Salvador. Since uh, 2011, uh, because guess what? My 
my soulmate was a Salvadorian. He was he was from Chalatenango. I went to it was like many times I offer and almost three years ago at Carlos Rosario we met at Carlos Rosario so I am from I can hear you. <laughs> no te escuchamos bien, Vanesilla. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So yeah. I, I met my soulmate in Pueblo Rosario, both of us, well, where I am, he was because he is in heaven now, but um, we are alumni, so that therefore I said I've been attached to El Salvador. Uh, we have a six-year-old kid, and I always said it's 75% Mexican, 25% Salvadorian, but yeah, in genetics, I he's 50-50. Well, I have had the opportunity uh, to travel to El Salvador. I'm, gonna, I'm making just a little bit of an introduction because it's, I've been, I don't know, I just, I love El Salvador. And, and I had had the, uh, the opportunity to, to go to El Salvador um, last, no, it was last year? More than, no, more, it was in 2019. Um, with Carla, with Carla, with Selbon. So my main point was uh, take all my husband's belongings. As I said, he well, he passed by passed away five years ago. So mm -hmm. that was a very mean, meaningful uh, travel for me, and I had had the opportunity to see El Salvador, like to visit, to be there, to visit the beautiful places. And the most thing that I have in my mom in my mind is if I arrive to El Salvador City, I can take the bus 125 to go to Chalatenango. That's mm -hmm. that's the thing that I really know and is in my heart. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna finish with that. And right now I would like to introduce um Miss Teresita Renata Piedra. She is from Costa Rica, and she is a currently a student at Sonia Gutierrez campus. And uh, also, as, as Selvon say, said, uh, Mr. Pineda will be in this discussion, answer our, my, well, our questions. So Teresita, would you like to introduce yourself before we start? Uh, yes. Um, First, first of all, I, I, I want to say thank you. Thank you for, for sharing with me this activity. Thank you, Vanessa, for sharing with us your feelings. Uh, for me, it's very important to, um, to hear about it. Um, I am Teresita Retana, I'm from Costa Rica. I'm Carlos Rosario student. I am very uh, proud to to study in, Car in Carlos Rosario because I, I think it's a good experience. And like oh, Grego said, I like, uh, like Grego said, um, I am looking for, for new opportunities. I am looking for, for, uh, um, for being here uh, confident and comfortable. Thank you, everyone. In which uh, level are you, Teresita? I'm sorry. Seven, seven a, a, a level. And who's your teacher? Uh, my my te teacher is Sara Berlin. Sara Berlin. Oh, she was my teacher in level seven too. Did oh, come on. Okay, <laughs> well, let, let's. Oh my God, for, for for my for my charger. Um, Meanwhile, I'm coming back. Please describe in three or four words your living and community experiences in your country of origin. So this means uh, for you, Teresita, in Costa Rica, and for uh, Mr. Uh, Gre Greco in El Salvador. Okay. Um, I was born in Cartago. Uh, Cartago is a province from my country, um, it's a it's an special place because they have a, a diversity um, weather's and um, for that reason we can find a, a lot of activities around the, the city. 
and the, in this province uh, you can find a lot of vegetable fruits and uh, and even uh, farms uh, in Cartago you can see two volcanoes to Realba and Volcan Irazú um, they are active now and um, Cartago was the first uh, capital from my country in the colonial time and um, I, I am very very proud to 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 was born in this in this city. Thank you, Teresita and uh, Gregor. Same same question for you. Okay, okay. Um, my experience in in my life in the community in El Salvador. Uh, I mean, it's um, wonderful to remember or uh, to have uh, very fresh in my mind is to live together with the family and share feeling each another every day uh, because uh, it's wonderful to live in the same country, in the same city with the people we love, you love. Um, also uh, enjoy your life as a Salvadorian uh, in the same place where you were a child. So is uh, any place you see or any place you visit has a meaning for you. It's different in, in, in other country. Uh, uh, I don't have memory uh, attached with any place here. Um, also my um, uh, experience in my country, my life, is uh, of course enjoying the, the food, the um, original food, um, also to work as a lawyer, because when you study to be professional, of course you want to live as your profession. Um, that is my memories and my experience to live in my country, a professional, enjoying family, enjoying place, enjoying food. Um, also, all the time speak and think in Spanish. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, so the next question is, um, what is your best memory about the culture of your country of origin? Okay, um, I have a lot of regions um, with different cultures. Um, if I talk about uh, uh, Guanacaste, is in the north of my country. They have a special culture about uh, Chorotega traditions, uh, Chorotega Indian traditions, and they made uh, a special um, um, how do you say uh, artesanía? I forgot the name, the no, the 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 word about artesanía. They made uh, art and craft. Excuse me? Art and craft. Yes. Um, and this is um, a, a good good part of from my culture. The other uh, the other thing that I thought is uh, about tradition. We we have a lot of tradition around my country, uh, around the food, around the art, um, around the uh, the environmental and. This is a good tradition too. Thank you, Teresita. Mr. Greco. Yes, the best memory about my, my culture is uh, basically the people, the, their behavior, uh, how they are, their culture, and of course, the original food. Because it's you in, in Washington, you eat pupusas, uh, mm -hmm. if you like it, Trust me, just wait to eat pupusas in El Salvador. You will be that, you will uh, understand why pupusas are very different there and here. And then uh, that is my, my answer. <laughs> are you agree with that, Vanessa and Selva? Yeah. And Stella? <laughs> we went to, we went to um, how is the, 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 the town, Carla? Oloquilta. Oloquilta, yes. We had that chance to eat pupusas over there. 
Or Oroco? Salsa Negro in San Miguel. Uh, yeah. uh, and Olo how the, how the, how the o Oloroco? Loroco. Uh, Loroco. Loroco. Are, are delicious. This. Yeah. Yes, Loroco. Okay, let's move to the, the, uh, of the third, quest, third, third question. Okay. What are two or three important things to know about the people of your country? Okay. Um, in my country, we don't have army. Um, this is a, a good issue because um, the people is, is Pacific people. And um, the money who who spend in who who will spend in in, in army um, are uh, now investing in, in in culture and and education for that reason. Uh, I think that our country have a lot of possibilities to access uh, to good education and. Um, I think that the, the Costa Rican people is, is a Pacific people, is an harmony. Um, we have, uh, we, we, we want to, to solve our conflicts, uh, talking. Um, we try to, to use a dialogue with the, poli for, with the politics and um, in general, this is a good um, a good uh, issue in my country, I think. That's all. Okay, Mr. Grego. <laughs> okay, um, the two or three important things to know about the Salvadorian people. Um, the most important is a Salvadorian to learn to be happy under difficult time. Salvadorian people have uh, a strong and good attitude with the life. Uh, that is the most important. And uh, also the people uh, is famous, are famous because uh, Salvadorian like uh, to work and they are excellent worker. Um, uh, but also, they are very friendly with tourists and with other people. Uh, in general, the Salvadorian people love people and it always is thankful. There are exceptions, but there are a small exception. It's a few people. In general, it's very friendly people. Uh, I am sure, as you know, Salvadorian people, you will enjoy uh, all of them, all of us. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes, that's true. I was very love for a Salvadorian man. <laughs> and, and, that is, and that is true because you know you have me at the school, so... Exactly. We are, we are cheras. <laughs> and I told Carla, since my husband is in heaven, so she is in charge of, trust me, to the Salvadorian culture to my son. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. What a and privilege. I, Thank, thank you, you, Vanessa. You're welcome. So the third one. This is very important because I believe every every single country has this kind of um, issue. Um, Can I say a question for Mr. Grego Pineda? Yes. How do you feel when you listen El Carbonero? Oh. Um, yeah, uh, the music uh, have different meaning when you live outside of your country. Uh, even listen the the El Carbonero or El Sombrero Azul or any traditional music from your country really is um, it difficult to be uh, it difficult to be without feeling emotional feeling a strong emotional feeling listening the music or to eat pupusas or to or receive friends from your country 
uh, really when when people from your country visit you they have different smell they 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 have your country in the in, in, in with them so it's um very emotional experience always even i had 20 years living in usa mm -hmm. true thank you Gracias. Thank you so much. Okay, let's jump to the third question. What is a misconception or misperception about your country? It's like something that is untrue that people say or think about the people from your country. What is what is one or a, or a few facts that people should know about your country? This question is kind of long. Hmm. I think like uh, other countries, my country have uh, my country have a lot of problems, social problems. Um, when the people uh, say that uh, my my in my country live the people are um, more happy around the world, I think this is partially true because so in some place the people um, have to have have, have a, a lot of problems um, um, uh, they have a lack affordable houses for example or they have a lot uh, a, a lack a lot lack in income that affect uh, their condition the, their social conditions and um, and even I, I think that we have to work hard about the environmental um, also when the, the people uh, talk about my country with the best or with the with the principal uh, environmental care we have to work about that about that we have to improve the care about about uh, environmental and even in my country we have to work about the quality uh, because even now we have uh, inequality uh, fair about uh, women and and girls especially in salaries especially uh, we have a lot of uh, femicides and uh, this this situation uh, is 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 a big problem, and we have to talk about that. And it's important that uh, that the people knows that in Costa Rica we have to work uh, to solve a lot of social problems, especially. Thank you. I have a question for Teresita. Yes, of course. Do you think the weather can affect the environment? Because I think it's a, a little, it's tropical or it's wet all the time. Do you think the weather, the condition of the weather affect the, the environment? Or do you think that it, it could be a problem for construction of houses or something? The environment, the, the weather, you know, the clima, the in your country. I, I not, I not, I know the weather, especially. I think, I, I think, um, I think um, the the trees, the the could a lot of trees affect the environmental. Yes, for construction, and um, and even we have a lot of problem with um, with care that water in the mountains, especially because um, we have a big uh, we have uh, develop we 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 are we are permitting a a, a big development uh, buildings in the mountains where the where the water. Uh, Form. I I think this is a, a big problem, the water and and even the deforestation. 
Thank you. Gracias. Okay, Mr. Greg, Grego, I believe it's your turn. Uh, yeah, the question is very important because the misconception or misinterception about my, my country. Um, usually you know about the Salvador through the, the media. Usually you got information about my country for news, but the most of them it's a, the most of them are bad news about my country. They speak about the violence. Uh, they talk about the, the uh, you know, uh, many issues with the guns. Uh, for that reason, many, uh, many people think that all Salvadorian like the violence or the most or the worst is they think that all of us are members of the gangs. Um, it's not true because uh, in general the Salvadorian love peace. Salvadorian love peace because we suffer the, uh, the war, the civil war. So we really understand how important it is to live in peace. Uh, of course, a Salvadorian country has a social problem. We have guns, we have violence. Most of them is a, is a young people. Um, but it's a, you know, it's a social cancer. But we are working as a society with that, also the government. We try to resolve the problem. Uh, we are working in that situation. Just to, I want to let clear that the few people live in that way. The most of them want to change the society. The most of them love peace. Um, when I come in this in this country 20 years ago, my son was a uh, 13 year or 14 year old. We were walking around the park. Um, one American uh, uh, has a dog. My son loves dogs. My son speaks very well English because he studied in American school in, in, in USA, in El Salvador. When my son uh, mm -hmm. say, oh, so cute your dog, uh, uh, immediately the American asking him, oh, which, uh, which gang are you member? Uh, if we were in shock. We were in shock because my son never have any uh, attached with that issue. Uh, but now my son is professional, he has uh, two masters, um, he never forget the answer uh, because that is the, in the, the American mind, they think that all of us are members of the gangs, but that is not true, that is not true. We need to work in, in, in resolve that issue. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Teresita. Thank you so much, Grego. So this is the last uh, question. Uh, okay, so if I were a new person living or visiting in your country, what are some historical places that I should visit and why? Teresita, you're muted. Okay. Um, I will recommend you to visit uh, Guayabo, the Guayabo de Turrialba. Um, it's an historical place uh, built, I don't know, maybe in a pre-Hispanic uh, era. And it's very, it's very special this place because um, now you can find um, an aqueduct uh, from from this uh, time, and you can uh, visit to um, a lot of volcanoes around the, and around uh, around the, the cities and. In culture, you can find um, many uh, museums, museums in the, in downtown, especially in San Jose. I recommend you to visit uh, these places. Um, 
if you want to to go for rest i recommend you to visit a lot of beach in in the north in the south pacific and in in the atlantic uh, the the region in atlantic region is very uh, very interesting uh, region is the place where um, African American live. They they have a good culture. Uh, you can find a lot of uh, a culture, a, a lot of diversity culture in in this region. Um, I recommend to visit this this area. And uh, even in the Atlantic, you can visit. Uh, the Buri Buri region is an indi indi indigenous uh, region that uh, reflects part of our culture too. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I want to go to rest. <laughs> <laughs> Good. For you, Gregor? Uh, I recommend it to visit uh, Old Town, San Salvador, Old Town City. Uh, especially to visit uh, cathedral, National Cathedral. Um, very, very especially to visit the uh, Monsignor Romero town in the basement, in the basement of the uh -huh. cathedral. <laughs> then um, it's a spiritual uh, experience, even though if you are a Catholic, doesn't matter. It's, uh, Monsignor Romero is beyond than, is so important beyond than, than religion issues. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, it's so important example example as a as a, as a man as a human. So also uh, should be visit. You you, you need to visit Suchitoto. Suchitoto mm -hmm. it's a, a small town. It's a one hour away from the city, but it's a so beautiful place because the river with the mountain, the view, also the, the artist uh, craft. So it's, uh, that is the hist historical place, but also the beach, a mountain. Uh, the good thing in El Salvador is uh, a small uh, territory, so you can visit beach, mountain, and old town in the same, in the same day uh, mm -hmm. and, and enjoy. Um, I recommend to visit my country when after pandemic will be a good experience to visit El Salvador. And also if you know, if you met Salvadorian, don't be afraid. Just give opportunity to be friend with you. Really, you will find a good friend among us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Greco. Did you, did you see, I mean, did you write that? Uh, Carla, we didn't go to Suchitoto next time. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's so next. much to see that three, four days, even though it's a small country, mm -hmm. three, four days is not enough to, 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 to go around important um, places. But yeah, that was not the last time, right, guys? So, not the last as soon time as, at all. as soon as this this pandemic ends, going back. Exactly. Good. Okay. Uh, these are the four questions that we really were thinking about um, how you guys could show your country and your culture in uh, a positive way, very, very, very away, far away from the north. And thank you so much for your answer and your time. Thank so, you. Selvon? Yes, thank, thank you both. Thank you, Teresita. Thank you, Grego. Um, we would love to have you back as well. I learned a lot. I have a lot of notes here of places I'll be visiting in Costa Rica. And of course, when I go back to El Salvador. So with that, I want to introduce Fidel, who's our librarian, to give us a walk through of a virtual tour and then he'll talk about ways that you can work with him to uh, do a virtual tour so i'm going to give fidel the reins fidel first see if you can share the screen and then i will uh, change it over to Paul.
asking, I can now. Can you see my screen? Yes. All right. Oh, thank you, Salvan. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you, Teresita and Mr. Greg, uh, Greg, Greg Lowe. It's a pleasure to hear all the wonderful stories and, you know, culture. It always makes me feel like, you know, I have to go, you know, see these places, but I can, um, I can uh, uh, tell you that I, you know, I know how wonderful, wonderful people from places yeah, uh, you know, I am very happy to work with students and colleagues, uh, very wonderful people from uh, Central America, North and South, you know, whole, you know, of, uh, you know, Latin America. So, and it's a pleasure to have known you all. And it's uh, always a great thing to learn uh, every time you guys speak. And it's always, you know, interesting to learn, especially from real, you know, life experiences. Um, thank you very much for all those stories. It's you know, always, like I said, makes, makes me feel like, you know, I want to go, you know, see these places. So thank you again for adding. Um, so part of this panel, this presentation was also, as you mentioned, there are places, you know, that you mentioned that we were, you know, want to go see, especially, and you know, visitors. So we, you know, uh, wanted to, give students actually a separate session in the afternoon and one in the evening. If students want to create a virtual tour using Google's, you know, tour, you know, tour creator. So now that we are always, you know, you know, living virtually. So if we want to do a quick tour of, you know, some favorite places uh, that we know of from, you know, our countries. And uh, so this is a, just like a tool where we can create a virtual tour of you know places that we like and this will be i'll be just doing a quick demo as to how to create a tour so this is just like a google tour creator website one can just go online like on you know google and uh, type in google tour creator will be like i think this is where it is So as I, as you can see, you can just, you know, this is like, you know, how it, uh, your, your place will be appearing. So, you know, here, just like go ahead and cre create your tour. All you do is just like, you know, add a new tour. Can you see this? Yes. Oh okay, yeah, so you can just like create a tour, you know, give it maybe a name, the title, um, and, uh, you know, make sure you put an image if you want. Maybe this is a Central America. If I want to create a Central American, and you can obviously give a description, and you can create. When you create, it will give you um, an option to add your scenes, like you know, places that you want to add. Like if I want to do San Jose city in um, Costa Rica. Mm. So that would be a scene like you could just like simply click add scene down here and you can simply just add as many scenes as you want. And at the end, you can just like, uh, you'll be able to publish that and then share, have a link to share to people. So this is an, as an example. I made of, uh, an example, a sample from San Jose City, Costa Rica. This is like a, a demonstration of how you can create a, a virtual tour of places that you want people to, to go see. Uh, so we'll be doing a, a, a separate session this afternoon from 12 to 1 in the, in the evening from uh, 7 to uh, 8. Please feel free to join us to learn how to, you know, create virtual tours. Uh, thank you very much. And again, thank you for sharing the stories. I learned a lot. Appreciate that. Thank you, thank you so much, Fidel. So with thank that, you. we'll now open up to any questions folks may still have before we wrap up. Any final questions? This has been a great event, but we have about one more minute. 
Uh, any questions for our panelists? Any questions for Fidel? Any questions for anyone from Student Services? Um, any final questions before we wrap up? So hearing none, we want to say thank you to everyone for joining us today for 2020 Teaching Central America Week. We all learned so much. I learned a lot. I have a list here of places I'm going to be visiting. And also some books I'll be reading from uh, Grego and also from Frida Larios. Again, as students, you can advocate for art integration within your classes. You can reach out to Tara Villanueva. And please reach out to the student services team. And that's Ana Reyes, Claudia Stev, Tian Lee, Stella Clavijo, Carla Ramos, Vanessa Magana, and Alaline Desi. And I am Selvin Waldron, Director of Student Services. For any way we can support you, we always are glad to be joined by the library team with Fidel and Maureen. Have a great rest of your day and do celebrate our wonderful countries from Central America. Thank you so much. Thank well. you.